remember, every man is individually responsible for this mission. So listen carefully. When we go in tonight, it'll be in two rubber boats. Boat Able, that's you, Kelly, will land first, reconnoiter the area, and set up security. I'll be in Boat Baker with Mr. Manley and the demolition team. We'll land right after Kelly, set up perimeter defense. Welch, you push right to the objective and go to work. I'll stay with the boats. You check with me on the walkie talkies Now, when Mr. Manley and the demolition team get the powder set, he'll tell me and I'll call in security. Now, are there any questions? All right, check your equipment and weapons. Smitty, you check the boats. Manley, remember that your job is demolition, not fighting. If there's any interference or if your part is detected, withdraw. We'll hit them again some other place some other night. Aye, aye, Captain. 800 yards, sir. Left, five degrees rudder. Left, five degrees rudder, sir. All engines stop. All engines stop, sir. Mr. Manley, I'll ease her in from here. When I've gone as far as I can, I'll pass the word. The rest of it's up to you. Aye, aye, sir. Now, keep in touch with me. No matter what you run into, don't get trigger happy. The only explosion I want to hear is that bridge going up. All ready, Chief? Yes, sir. Stand by your boats. Load boats and shove off when ready, sir. Put them over the side. Engineering officer, sir. George, stand by. We might have to pick up the landing party in a hurry. Gonna be any shooting. I sure hope they get that powder on shore before it starts. There won't be any shooting tonight. Besides, bullets won't detonate that stuff. Well, maybe a tracer bullet. Yeah. Gunnery officer, sir. Al, train everything you've got out there. If they get into trouble, I want to seal off the area. Good. Landing party to shore, sir. Hey, they made it. They made it all right.
Take him down to McLeish. And see that they don't get hurt. Get McLeish on the phone. Get Chief McLeish on the phone. Skipper to you, Chief. Remember, Chief, I don't want any heroes. Holler if you need us. Aye, aye, sir. What do you got there, Bar? Found these people under the bridge. They live there. You better get back to Mr. Manley. He'll need you. Clark! Break out a sandwich, Smitty. Yeah, sure. Do you know anything about kids? No. But my wife said in her last letter I better start learning. Well, start learning now. Hey. How'd you know I had a sandwich? Oh, you always have a sandwich. Clark, take them out there about 100 yards and try to make them understand there's going to be an explosion. When you run into the other boys, stick with them till I call you in. Then come run. Right, Chief. No word from the beach? None, sir. Good. I don't want to hear a thing until you say landing party shoving off. Kelly, shove off as soon as he's ready. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, shove off when you're ready. Right now. Landing party shoving off, sir. Where's Mr. Manley? He's bringing up the rear. All right, let's get out of here. Cleared, sir. Something must have gone wrong. Something fouled up. Put me ashore, Chief. Aye, aye, sir. But let's let's give it ten more seconds. Now, time's a wasting. Nice explosion, Mr. Manley. Beautiful, Chief. Just beautiful. Deck party, stand by to pick up boats. Deck party, stand by to pick up boats. That mother and kid get away all right, Clark? Sure, Chief. Last time I seen her, she was hightailing it off for a safe spot. How's everything? Okay? The donuts all right? Uh, fine. Uh, good. Good. Hey, that kid told me to tell you that was a great sandwich. Are they awful young, or are we getting old? A little of both, I guess. Sure is a changed Navy. A few years back... Hey, Chief. What do you want, Smitty? Is it okay to ask where we're going? No, well, I guess so. We're going to rendezvous with the rest of the division at Zazabo. Zazabo? Who's she? Zazabo used to be a Japanese naval base on Kyushu Island. Now we use it to service the United Nations fleet. Yeah, I reckon that'll mean a lot of heavy braids are gonna come aboard for inspection, too. That's right. Now you'll have to wash behind your ears twice a day. You've all been a good dungaree Navy. Now you're gonna have to brush up on naval courtesy. 
A thing you've all neglected since boot camp. Like what? Oh, little things you, you figure might not have nothing to do with winning a war. But it's kept the Navy a fighting and a winning for a long time. Does that answer your question, Admiral? Aye, aye, Chief. Now hear this. Now hear this. This is the captain. I've just received orders from the commander, Naval Forces Far East. Destroyer Division 12, which includes the Morgan, is ordered to San Diego Naval Base for 30-day availability and overhaul. That is all. Yay! Yay! Oh, 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 how about him? Well, I knew the chief would have to be wrong about something someday. <laughs> to leave the ship, sir. Granted. It's always singing, Chief, about a girl. Last war, it was Lily Marlene. Now some dame's hair hangs down in ringlets. You're late coming ashore. No hurry. Yep, pretty dull. Not like she used to be, Mac. This was really a rip roaring Liberty Town 20 years ago. Yeah. Pinky's open. Still ain't out of bounds. Thanks. tricks and I tell them. I tell them, sailor, you name it. You name it and I'll find it for you. Anywhere from here to Tijuana. Same old thinking. You have one of the tin cans that came in from Korea? Yep, the Morgan. Oh, the Morgan, huh? Well, here's to it. And it kind of rugged, huh, Chief? Oh, I can read you like a book. You know, you need a little fun yourself. But an old China hand like you knows what a payday's for, huh? Yeah, I know what paydays are for. 
You know what paydays are for, too, don't you? You must have a million dollars you got from sailors' paydays. No more for me, Pinky. No more. I'm going to save my paydays from now on. Now you're talking sense. Well, that's a good idea. Save your paydays. Here, I'll drink to that. Eh, what's this stuff get you anyway? It ain't even good enough for boots. Look at him. They served their hitch, win the war, and then... And then they float away, remembering big times. I'll just keep putting on hash marks. The whole road. Pinky, I got to. Fill this up, baby. I ain't got no place else to go. Till some smart exec that wasn't even born when I first shipped over stands at the gangway saying goodbye. Glad to get rid of an old, worn-out crab like me. And then what's waiting for me on the beach? I still ain't got no place to go. A man ought to have a place to call home. That's what he ought to have. Ah, uh, you're right, Chief. Well, you just, just make yourself at home here. your dough back in your pocket now. You're going to save it. Here, put it. Hey, listen. <clears throat> now, you stick around a little while, and then me and you will go down to Tier 1 and see it like the old days. Remember that? Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Telephone. Yeah, all right. Hey, Chief, have another one on the house. Now, stick around. Come on. Ready for a cup of coffee? Yeah. You said it, beautiful. You sure are drunk, Chief. Come on. You never heard of old Sue Paul McLeish, did you? Nope, I didn't. I get off in five minutes. What about you and me get some air? Okay by me, beautiful.
Chief. Real good. Hi, Chief. Good morning. Thanks. Is that really the way you always drink your coffee? <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> Say, I, um, I guess I really hung one on last night, huh? Yeah, you sure did. I ordered the eggs straight up. You want some hot cakes with them? Sure, Frida. Eggs and hot cakes, they go fine. A stack in a hurry. Did I make you trouble last night? No. Except when you wouldn't let us get you out of your shirt. Us? Who helped you? Jimmy. Look, Frida, I, I don't get it. You don't get what? Well, why did you and your friend go to all that trouble? Well, you were talking last night. And I heard you. And... Oh, that was whiskey talking. Whiskey doesn't talk. Just makes you say out loud things nobody else should hear. Want some more coffee? I want to hear more, Frida. Go on. Why? Well, I told you. I heard you talking last night. Well, I understood what you meant. I guess that's why I... Sometimes I talk like that myself. And I don't drink. I just talk to myself. I know it's crazy, but I do it anyway. I tell myself about how maybe someday I'll have a place of my own. Not big, just a little place. It's what I've always wanted. I know just where it's gonna be. The trees there are the greenest ever. And there's the cutest little yellow house right in the middle of them. You go right out Camino del Rio, and then you turn right on Murphy's... I told you it was crazy. It's a pipe dream. Like yours. That's why. I never did anything like that before. Like last night, I mean. How can you get a place like that by yourself? What time do you get off work tonight, Freda? Ten o'clock. Then you wait. What about your breakfast, aren't you? Just wait. Hey, Chief. Get in. I'm just going to the Navy landing. That's all right. Get in. Thanks for last night. It's okay. Just don't get any wrong ideas about Frida. You were a brother or something? No. She's a friend of my wife's. Got a room at our house. A fine place for a friend of your wife's to be living. That's her business, sailor.
forget it, Chief. It's on me. Thanks. Say, Jimmy, how come Freedom missed getting hooked up by this time? She didn't. What happened? Pearl Harbor. He was on the Arizona out there. Him and a couple of thousand other guys. They're still out there with a big monument over them. Yeah, I've seen him. Say, he looks something like you, a big homely guy. Just like you. <laughs> so long, Chief. So long, Jimmy. Hey, Mac. Hi, Spike. You're gonna cut your throat with that thing someday. Well, I haven't yet. In fact, saved my life a couple of times in New Guinea. Hey, what are you doing aboard? Oh, thought I'd get cleaned up a bit. Start fresh. Well, say, there's a message for you. Tommy Tompkins wants you to drop by Shore Patrol headquarters at 2200. Mm, I can't. I got a date. Oh, 9.30 do? Well, he said tell you he takes over the desk at 10. Sounds like somebody waved a bar rag in front of one of our kids. Uh-huh. You want to book a bet on who did it? Nope. No betting on a one-horse race. Hi, Donnie. Hello, Mac. You want to see me? Yeah, I got one of your kids in here. Name is Smith. What did he do this time? Routine disorderly. Took a punch to the shore patrolman. Great future in that. They all got to learn the hard way. I remember you one night in Norfolk when... Yeah, we... sure, I remember. <laughs> What about Smitty? He brought him in this morning and he started yelling for you. I thought I'd better put him on ice until I could check with you. Thanks. Where is he? In the blue room. Joe, let the chief talk to Smith. This way, chief. All right, Smith, hit the deck. You got company. Hi, chief. Smitty, what did the Navy do to deserve you? They're just lucky, I guess. <laughs> Uh, gee, I don't know, Chief. There were some posters back home in front of the post office in Kansas. You know, uh, sailors and hula girls and all that stuff. Well, there was a fella standing beside the poster in a uniform. And all I said was, what does a guy have to do to get in the Navy? And here I am. And here you are, in the brig. Everybody else makes a nice, quiet liberty. Everybody but us. You wind up disgracing your uniform and the ship. What do you mean, everybody but us? Where were you? Pinkies. Go on. Well, then I hit a few other hot spots, and then I ended up in this charming abode. Well, what'd they take you for? Everything but my plane ticket. I had that and my shoe. Plane ticket? Sure. I'm leaving at 11 o'clock to go home and see the folks. I only got five days. Well, why didn't you leave last night? The first night ashore? Is there a plane ticket in this stuff? Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Bellflower, Kansas, and return. Here, let me see that. Where do you think you're going? Home. Home? You're in for the duration. Go. Bring Smith out here. Well, that's the way the ball bounces. Hi, Chief. Say, you're late. Yeah, I know it. Where is she? Inside. I told her she was a chump, but she's waiting for you. <laughs> Hi, Frida. I thought you'd be gone. You said wait. I get my coat. Come on, have one on the house. Sorry, Pinky, I got a date. You got a date? Good night, Jimmy. Want to live? No, thank you. Good night. What do you know about that? Oh, Frida's a cute one. First time I ever saw her go for a sailor. 
Well, forget it. Moonlight's pretty on the water. Makes the shadows dance. Yeah, I know. I was born on Lower Fulton Street, Brooklyn. Raised up tough. I know Brooklyn. Remember J Street, the Star Theater? Oh, yeah. Pretty hot burlesque, I used to think. I used to buy a box seat making Liberty. Used to sit there and whistle at the girls. A kid like me doing that. I was there. Selling tickets. Oh. First Liberty I made in this place was just a sleepy little town. Sure was beautiful. You know that park right across the street from the Grand Hotel? Old timers used to sit there and whittle every afternoon. I never drove out Camino del Rio, though. You figure we could make it? A place like that? You're kidding, Mac. Think maybe we could try? It's a dream, that's all. A place like that would cost an awful lot of money. Frida, a chief's pay ain't so bad. The trouble is, I never was able to save any of it. You think I couldn't? You think just because of last night that oh, I wouldn't? Oh, no, no, I don't think that. I know you could. It's not that. It's just that something would happen. I don't know what, but something would happen, and then the whole thing would... Frida, be... I could do it. I could save my dough just like I always said I would. I never could before, but I could do it now. Tonight, huh? Yeah, I thought I'd catch up on some sleep. Jump in, I'll take you down the Navy landing. All right. Jimmy, you and Frida picked me up at 10 in the morning. And what's doing at 10 in the a.m.? We're driving out Murphy's Canyon. Does Frida know about this? No. No, I guess she don't. She'll be there. It's because I'm happy. It's just like you said, Frida. The house and the trees. Avocado trees. The things really grow on them? Avocados grow on them. Aren't they the greenest trees you ever saw? Yeah. And a little yellow house. <laughs> right over here, folks. Here's the lunch, complete with hard-boiled eggs and tuna sandwiches. <laughs> well, what do you think of the place, Chief? Just wonderful, Jimmy. There's plenty of hot coffee in the thermos here. Well, thanks. And uh, here's something especially for you. <laughs> I'll be right back. I saw a picture about Ireland once. They got marriage brokers over there. They arrange things between a man and a woman. Maybe Jimmy's in the wrong business. He and his wife have been very good to me for about 12 years. He told me about Pearl Harbor about that fellow on the Arizona. 
Must have been a nice guy. Did Jimmy know him? He was his brother. own the place and they want to sell. They don't need cash and a thousand dollars will buy them the deal. All you got to do is pay the down payment. The avocados will take care of the installments. Oh. Well, you make a deal with the Growers Association. They come in, cultivate the crop, pick it, ship it, and send you a check. Oh, no, they don't. Ain't nobody picking my avocados but me. Oh. Well, then, in that case, the place will practically pay for itself. Hey, I can take out a maximum allotment. I've got 300 saved. I may throw in a few bucks myself just to get you two off my neck so I can get back to work. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> I'll go pick the rest of the things up. Chief, we can really do it, can't we? Honey, would you please cut out that cheap stuff? Well, what did they call you when you were a little boy? Chuck. Okay, Chuck, we can do it, can't we? We're a sin. Mm -hmm. brought the book. There's a slip in there, Chuck, that you've got to sign. You take it downtown tomorrow, any time after 10, to the security bank. It's a man named Brown. Mr. Homer Brown. You'll see it written on a wooden block next to one of the windows. He said you go down and sign that tomorrow, and then it'll be a joint account. What's this $146? It's mine. Was mine. You fix this up tomorrow, and it'll be ours. Now, you won't forget. No, I won't forget. Before we sail, I'll, I'll take out a lot of papers, and then every month, no matter where I am, they'll write it in a book. That's how I'll save my share. And I figure I can put in a little every week. Won't take long, will it, Chuck? Will it, Jimmy? No, no, not the way you two got it planned. <laughs> well, I'll go check out, huh? You got a pen, Jimmy? Yeah. You take care of yourself. I will. We... We got a fine exact. Name of Manly. Two and a half striper. He's a good guy. You better come back. I don't know what I'll do if you don't come back. If I can walk, I will. Even if I gotta crawl, I will. It never made any difference, not before. I'm, I'm not a very good hand at letter writing. Well, look, if anything happens, you come to Pinky's. I'll be there every day at 6 o'clock. Even if it's my day off, even if Pinky fires me, no matter what happens, I'll be there. I'll be there at Pinky's at 6 o'clock. Hear me, Chuck? Sure, Frida. I want to see you off tomorrow. No. Down at the fleet landing. No. Please. No, Frida. Just... Just tell me about the little place. Like you did that first time. Well, you go out Camino del Rio. And you turn north on Murphy's Canyon. This little avocado ranch. The lemon trees, too. And this little yellow house right in the middle. And the trees there are the greenest you ever saw. That's good.
Now hear this. New hands report to Chief Bosons mate McLish on the forecastle. Now your assignments are made by a watch, quarter, and station bill, drawn up by a junior officer from each department and approved by the exec. For instance, Apprentice Seaman Porter finds a bill on the bulkhead that tells him he belongs on the signal deck when General Quarters is sounded. You get that, Porter? Now, where's Porter? Here, Chief. What kept you, Porter? I couldn't find the forecastle. I've been ten minutes climbing up and down stairs. Up and down ladders. There's no stairs on a ship. There's no wall, just bulkhead. No ceilings, just overhead. Didn't you learn anything at boot camp? Yes, sir, but things look much different down here. Well, then, get up here and take a look. Yes, sir. Now, Commodore, this is the focus. It used to be a raised deck built like a castle, so you could shoot down on the enemy if they tried to board you. Forward is the bow. That's the eyes of the ship. Old sailors used to paint eyes on the bow so the ship could see where she was going. The stern is the fantail. Now, study hard, listen hard, work hard. Someday this tin can will be proud of you. Report to your leading petty officers. This minute. Package for you, Chief. I just got the mail sorted out. Why don't you go ahead and open it up? It's a cake. And what is it, a birthday or something? Somebody's idea of a joke. Oh, wait a minute, here's a note. It says to Chief McLish from Mrs. Nellie Porter for being so nice to my son Cecil. Cecil? Who's Cecil? You know, that's Porter. Oh, yeah. Have some cake, boys? Yeah, all right. Thank you. Now, we gotta save a piece for... What was his name? Cecil. Cecil. Brother, am I in trouble? This voyage is going to be one long tour of extra duty for me. When the chief gets Excuse a motor me. I just remember. Oh, now, wait a minute. Clark told you what happened. How do you like that? I start to tell him my trouble. Now, wait a minute, chief. I begged my mother not to do that. You know how some women are. Yeah, Porter, I know how some women are. When you write your mother, tell her thanks. It was a good cake. was done in the first 10 minutes of the raid, before our guys got to work. Four Jap torpedoes hit the Oklahoma on the port side and exploded. She began to list the port. Most of the men below were trapped. I talked to fellows that made it topside and found the oak rolling so fast, they climbed over her starboard side and walked right across her bottom. A lot of them didn't make it, huh? 400 bodies were still in the ship when she was refloated months later. The Arizona was hit by the first torpedo and bomber planes the Japs sent in. One bomb hit the forecastle, another exploded on the number four turret, another ripped through the bridge, and then a bomb dropped exactly into the Arizona stack, exploding in the boilers and setting off the powder in the magazines. The blast broke her back, she settled fast in the water. That's her over there the top of a bridge still above water. 
a lot of her crew still aboard. They have a monument there, and they raise and lower the flag every day, just as though she was still on duty. Attention, and salute. Shopping out there. How are we making it? General health excellent. Of course, the usual amount of destroyer distress. All right, Porter, you're relieved. Hey, why don't you go down and ask the cook to give you a nice plate of salt pork? Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'll stay up here in the fresh air. What's the matter? You got a weak stomach? No, it's strong enough. <laughs> I wonder what he's thinking. What he sees out there. Well, oh, maybe an old four piper plunging into an Atlantic storm. Maybe he remembers the ships along the China Station. The old battle wagons blistering in tropic heat. I wonder if he drinks liquor out of a soup bowl like he drinks coffee. Not anymore. Signed up a maximum allotment payable to some bank account in San Diego. I forget the woman's name. Hope some fast worker hasn't got her hooks into him after all these years. You're a fellow on the old Billy. Stood watching the wake till he went slap at it. What's that got to do with me? You've been up there for an hour, acting like a homesick gull. What's the matter with you? I'm worried, Spike. What about? About this screwy setup we're headed into. The last war we're fighting the Japs. So we stand up and we slug it out with them. When they got enough, they holler uncle and the war's over. This time we start trading punches with the North Koreans. The next thing we know, the Red Chinese are in it. And it's a quart of soupy aggie to a punch in the nose that there's somebody behind them ready to cop a snake. So, we take them too. Even if we got to get off the deck to do it. This Navy now is a trade, Mac. Just a trade. Yeah, sure. I remember saying that myself. Only I'm not so sure about it now. Spike, this could be dangerous out here. It's heavy mind water and... Well... Besides, I promised somebody I'd come back from this one. You promised that before, too, haven't you? Yeah. Only this time I meant it. You in love? Why don't you mind your own business? Now, the task force commander has a new chore for us, and we're back on the day shift. Now here is the Yalu River, separating North Korea from Manchuria. Here is Sinju. Now three bridges cross the river at this point, supplying the Red Armies. Planes from the carriers are going to destroy those bridges, and it's going to be a rough one. They've been ordered not to violate Manchurian territory, which of course extends halfway across the river. You mean they're supposed to destroy only the Korean half of the bridges, sir? Right. That means they have to come right down the riverbed to lay in those bombs. They'll be cold turkey for the Red anti-aircraft fire. Air Sea Rescue ought to be lively, sir. Now, that's where we come in. All damaged planes will head for the open sea and ditch. We've been ordered to move as far north and as close inshore as possible. Now, there are no available charts for these waters, so we have to be prepared for anything, especially mines. Well, that's all, gentlemen. Be sure and brief all your men.
They're coming, sir. Our planes. Mission completed. Well, there they go. And it's for hot milk and honey. Yeah. Don't seem to be as many coming back as there were going out. Range to shore. 2,000 yards, sir. Any report, Talker? It's coming now, sir. Four bombers in mountains. Six others in trouble. Think they can make it to the carriers. A cripple coming in off the port bow. Let's swing in closer to shore. All engines ahead, one third. All engines ahead, one third, sir. Lap full rudder. Lap full rudder, sir. on damage and casualties. Send the damage control party aft. Mine explosion astern. Damage control party lay aft. He doesn't answer the wheel, sir. Engineer officer reports starboard propeller disabled. Send a message to the flag. Mine damage to rudder and starboard propeller. Operating on one prop only. Request air coverage. Aye, aye, sir. How's that cut off now? All damage report, sir. Stern plate stove in. All damage compartments sealed off. Minor leaks in other compartments. They must have seen the explosive, I'm sure. I imagine we'll have visitors. We're practically a sitting duck now. Oh, Manley, I suppose you go down there and hustle that damage control party. Aye, aye, sir. Unidentified plane contact, sir. Bearing zero, three, five degrees. Probably our visitors. How's it coming, Chief? Well, the top side damage will be cleaned up pretty soon, sir. It's pretty bad down below, though. Ours, sir? I can't identify, Chief. Could be red bombers looking for cripples. Well, they're looking in the right place.
get the exec from CIC. CIC? Bridge? OOD, request the exec on the bridge. Mr. Manley, you want it on the bridge. Take over, Alec. Dead chief. OD and first lieutenant not town. I can't locate Mr. Dalton. You're hit, sir. I'll get the doc. No. He's got plenty of work to do in sick bay. How are things on deck, chief? The fire's under control? I think so, sir. Got to get a report from gunnery on damage and casualties. I'll get it, sir. Radio room. Exact request report. Radio room! Any report on that air cover? What's that? Flight coming in, sir. No. No more. She can't take it. Do it. What are they? like our boys. Yeah. They're ours, sir. Bridge. Radio room, sir. Destroyers, Colette and Hawkins on the way to pick us up.
Rita. You've been here long enough. I've got to get back to my stand. I never knew the ocean was so big. Wherever he is, he's all right. If he weren't, you'd read about it in the paper. I don't want to read about it in the paper. I want to see the Morgan come steaming past that light just the way she went out. Returns aren't all in yet, but I think your legs are going to be good as new, if you give them time. You try to rush it and... Good morning, Doctor. Morning. Got good news for you, Chief. You're booked for the Mercy. A hospital ship? That's right. You'll be in San Francisco two weeks from today. Well, I don't want to go to San Francisco. And I'm not going any place on a hospital ship. I'm headed for San Diego, and I'm going on a tin can. That's the way I came out, and that's the way I'm going back. Yeah? You didn't come here from Korea on a destroyer. I didn't have anything to say about it. They knocked me out. Maybe we can knock you out again. You wouldn't do a thing like that, would you, Doc? No, no, Chief. We wouldn't do a thing like that. Better keep him off those legs. Yes, sir. Hey, how about that steak? Maybe a little. Every day from six o'clock on. Hey, Pinky. Mm -hmm. There's a fellow over there that wants to see Frida. Salt himself. Soup bowl McGlish. Come on, Chief, have a drink with me. A real one. Where's Frida Pinky? Well, now that's a hot one. Where's Frida? What time does she come on? If I will get your ten, she's not gonna come on at all. Oh now, come on, Chief. You're not that dumb. You've been around. You know the tricks. Come on, have a drink. Wait for says she hasn't been around for a couple of days. Where is she? Well, who knows? She was a cute one, and Frida. You gotta hand it to her. The allotment made out to her account. No fuss, no feathers. Just so much every month. And prompt on the first, automatic. Just so much every month. She may be in Timbuktu by now. You're a liar. Oh, yeah? You know better, huh? You were a cinch for Frida, you know that. She got it while it lasted, and now, sucker, she's gone. You're a liar. He's a liar. Sure, Chief, he's a liar. You want me to break a bottle of beer over his head next time, will you? Yeah, boss. Too bad he walked out on you. All right, get those plates.
Hey, Chief! Boy, am I glad to see you. Where you been? Mexico? I just got back. I drove a couple guys down to Tijuana Sunday. They got lucky at the races and wanted me to drive them to Ensenada. Where's Freda? Well, isn't she inside? Pinky says she hasn't been around for a couple of days. I called your house and got no answer. Where's your wife? In L.A., at her sister's. What are you steamed up about? Freda, where is she? I don't know. Well, she said she'd be here. Every night at six, she said. Well, she didn't make it. Let's go find her. What's the matter with your leg? Nothing. Well, what's the game for? The rap people over the head had asked too many questions. All right, you big ape, cool off. Don't worry about Frida. Come on. They told me you were on the Mercy. I went all the way up to San Francisco to meet you. Are you all right? Sure, Frida, I'm all right. Everything's all right now. Come on, you two. Hiya, Tommy. Hello, Chief. Been looking all over for you. You'll have to excuse me. I, I just got married. Well, congratulations. But you'll have to postpone your honeymoon. Why? I was ordered to bring you in. What did he do? I don't know, ma'am. I just carry out orders. Come on, Mac. It must be a mistake. I'll call you just as soon as I straighten it out. You take care of it, Jimmy. Okay. What's this all about? I don't know, Mac. Hey, it's the Morgan. Yep, she came out of dry dock a couple of days ago. Some old friends of yours, Anna. New skipper, name of Manley. Manley. That must be old man Navy himself. He is. Well, come in, Chief. Excuse me, gentlemen. Of course, Captain. How are you, Chief? They're taking good care of you. Very good, Doctor. Yeah. Glad to see you again, Chief. They rushed me out of that hospital in the pearls so fast, I didn't get over your way. I got your message, sir. Nurse said you made out all right. Oh, sure. Lonely nights, I can play uh, tic-tac-toe on my chest. Aside from that, why... My leg's coming along, too, sir. It's getting stronger every day. Why, just coming out here in a shore boat made it... Morgan looks good, sir. Better than ever. Complete overhaul. We we'll leave for shakedown in the morning. Sit down, Chief. I, uh... Got the verdict here on your medical survey. I'm on the beach, sir. Retired. I'm sorry, Chief. That's all right, Captain. 
22 years. I'd have liked to have made it 30, though. What about the avocados and lemons? They're all secure, sir. We made a down payment on the ranch this morning. We? My wife. That girl Frida I told you about. The shore patrol picked me up right after the wedding. And then you and I had better hurry up our business, hadn't we? Good idea, sir. They'll pay you off on the beach. I'll send these to Captain Anderson. You can pick them up tomorrow. Now, he'll get you squared away. Now, would you like to look over the ship before you leave? Why, yes, sir, I would. Your division chief? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. to leave the ship, sir. Going away, President Chief. To Chief Petty Officer Charles McLeish, Army Skipper, Lieutenant Commander Frank Manley, United States Navy. Thank you, sir. I hope you like it. It's for your coffee time, be sure. Just my size, sir. I'll make good use of it. Just dream. 